Howdy folks. It's uh, been a pretty full day here, um, so I'm just going to read you one and get back to it. Uh, I did just take the scrap buckets out to the chickens and dumped it all over the ground and watch them go hog wild on it. So I thought it's a little early in the year for this piece, but seemed appropriate. It's from, uh, from the book From the Top. And the title of the piece is Really Free Range Chicken. Back home on the farm, I've been dealing with that one chicken. You know that one chicken. The one that's never where she's supposed to be. We free range our chickens in the early spring, but once asparagus and gardening season kick in, we switch over to a portable chicken fence. Nothing's more disheartening than spending the newborn morning nestling tender seedlings into the welcoming earth, only to wand out over a reflective afternoon lemonade to find the whole work scratched into oblivion by a gang of marauding cluckers. When we first started raising chickens, many people happily told me the birds would keep pests out of the garden. What they didn't tell me is they'd also strip the rutabaggies, strafe the string beans, claw up the garlic, and peck the eyes out of the potatoes. To be fair, they do take a break now and then to poop on the deck. I'll tell you how to keep pests out of the garden. Lock up the chickens. So now we have a fairly workable deal combining a coupon wheels and the aforementioned portable fence. I let the birds out on fresh ground in the morning. They get to peck and scratch and hunt bugs just the way they're designed. And we get to keep our kale. Meanwhile, I go up to work in my little office over the garage. But this year, a pattern has emerged. By 10 a.m. or so, I spy a barred rock hen come easing out from behind the granary, free range as you please. The first time, I figured it was a fluke. I caught her and put her back in. I made that sound easy, but it wasn't. Before it was over, both the chicken and I were out of breath and making angry squawking noises. Sometimes farmers need track shoes. I went back to work, and an hour later, there she was again. Lost my place. I had checked. Here we are. I checked the entire fence perimeter for holes or gaps. Nothing. Plus, those other 49 chickens, including identical breeds with identical wingspans and theoretically identical brain pans, were staying put. It's been a week now, and I still haven't figured it out. That chicken and I have gone 16 rounds. She's lost some feathers and I've lost some patience. The thing that really drives me nuts is that I can't actually catch her in the act. She's either in or she's out. And because of where we're grazing them, the coop isn't visible from where I'm working. And naturally, if I hang around spying on her, she stays put. I've entertained the idea of rigging a webcam so I can monitor her remotely, but we have real bad internet. Plus, these are the moments when you realize you, you're starting to go a little Captain Ahab over the whole deal. I have come to the conclusion that what we got here is a shape-shifting chicken. Yesterday, right on schedule, she tippy-toed out from behind the granary and slipped down between the spruce trees to peck around in the brush below the pole barn. I've seen a fox down there lately, so that chicken may be about to solve this problem herself. Passing through a fox is pretty much the ultimate shape shift. In the meantime, I bolt from the desk now and then to see if I can catch her in transit, but she's always either in or out. So far, she hasn't attacked the garden. Perhaps that's a team sport and she doesn't want to proceed without the other chickens. And therein lies the final indignity. Every time I stand there, all befuddled-faced, studying the fence, trying to work out how that dang Houdini bird does it, there are 49 sets of beady eyes staring right back at me, and every single one of them knows the answer. You know what makes an evil sound? 49 snickering chickens. See you later. Take care of each other.